How to train an AI model from scratch. This is what we're going to cover in this video here. So it's going to be a quick guide on how to actually like define a problem, generate a data set, how we choose the model, do the whole training loop and iterations, and then how do we get the model out there in production. So let's just jump straight into it. We have a quick guide here on the Ultra Lake blog post where we pretty much cover all different topics as we also cover on the YouTube channel. So make sure to check those out. So what does it actually mean to train an AI model? We need to have some historic data. Could also be future data that we get into our data flywheel. We basically just need to have some data that a model can learn from. So we have different predictive models, machine learning algorithms that we need to train based on the data. So what the model is doing, it's basically just adjusting a lot of different parameters to trying to learn patterns in our data. When it's learning patterns in our data, then if we have enough data, it can act like start to learn how is this data actually working and then it can use it for future predictions. So we take historic data, we have a model, we train a model on historic data, so our model can do predictions on future data. So this is pretty much just what it means to train an AI model and if we take a look at the full end-to-end -end scope, then we actually need to start with defining our use case. So this doesn't only apply to computer vision, this is everything in the AI and machine learning space where we have data that we want to train a model for and it pretty much works in the exact same way for all the different both modalities but also spaces in AI and machine learning. Which is also including computer vision for update detection, instant segmentation, all these use cases. So we need to define a use case, could be a problem where we want to detect a specific object. So that's defining our use case, it could also be text classification, natural language processing, time series data that we need to do detections of, like future data, how our sensors are behaving, is there any anomalies in our data, just spot patterns in our data. So once we have defined our use case, we can collect and prepare training data. The most important thing in machine learning and for all models is pretty much the data. The model itself doesn't really matter too much if we don't have good enough data. So the most important thing is data and trash into the model is also trash out. So we need to spend a lot of time on actually collecting not only just data, but quality data. It's much better to have quality data over a lot of data. So we really just need to make sure that we are focusing on the data part for our training. Once we have done that, then we need to select the right type of model or algorithm. A lot of people, they just go straight to the machine learning, deep learning solution, but there's also like traditional machine learning algorithms that does clustering, regression, classification, and so on, which is much more lightweight to run compared to like having to set up a decent CPU or even using a GPU just to run some basic algorithms through, which could be done with KNN algorithm or some regression algorithm and so on, which is much, much cheaper to use. And if we have a very easy solution, we could be, we have a linear relationship, could be that we just need to cluster our data into small clusters. If we just have like two very different clusters, could be two different colors, would be very, very easy to just cluster with a KNN or some other clustering algorithm compared to using a full scale neural network and a deep learning solution. So we have machine learning here, we have unsupervised learning, supervised learning and reinforcement learning, where in supervised learning, we need to have our ground truth data. So if we're talking about computer vision, we need to have our bounding boxes around the data that we want to train our model on because this is what we want the model to learn to be able to predict our bounding boxes once we run our model in production. So supervised learning, we do model training with label data. Unsupervised, we do model training with unlabeled data. So we just have a bunch of data where we want to learn patterns. We want to do some regression or clustering of our data. This is a supervised, unsupervised learning technique. So it basically just learns how to cluster data without any ground truth data at all. It's just looking at features, how are the features different from each other that could also be done in computer vision. Reinforcement learning, that is when the model takes an action in the environment and then also receives feedback. So that's more like an iterative loop where it just tries to learn, learn based on the feedback. This is way more like how a human will learn. Also supervised learning, unsupervised learning, but reinforcement learning where we basically just take actions, we receive rewards, positive and negative rewards, and then it, it learns 
despite that. It, of course, it requires a lot more iterations, a lot more definitions of our policies and the rules that goes into the reinforcement learning algorithm. So all of them have pros and cons. So yeah, we just need to choose a model. We have defined our data, we collect our data for a computer vision system, we label our data, then we select we want to use an autolytics update detection model, then we need to set up our training environment. So depending on what algorithm, some of the classical machine learning algorithms, they can run perfectly fine on a CPU. So we have the computing resources, programming language and framework. Most often like Python is used for just the AI development, the training and so on. Then you can always export into an optimized framework that runs on any code pretty much. It could be Rust, Python, C++, C, all these things here can be used for inference, but for training, we just want to have it as simple and easy as possible. So it could be different developer tools, Google Colab, Jupyter Notebooks, very, very often used for data analytics and also just doing machine learning because you can see the outputs from each cell. Very, very popular frameworks are TensorFlow and PyTorch, but also also analytics for a training environment when we're using computer vision models. So with also analytics, you can actually like just run few lines of code and you have the full training up and running. Have our data set connected to our model, we hit train and then it's pretty much just going to give us the model that we can run predictions on. So that whole framework is pretty much just free lines of code, but we can also create our own models with TensorFlow and PyTorch and set up our own training loops. This can be done Google Colab. We have tons of videos covering every single step of that here on the channel. So make sure to check that out. Then the next step is actually like training the model. And here we have a bunch of different high parameters that can be chosen, fine tuned and so on. So usually you will do a few training iterations where you adjust the parameters to improve the performance. So once you're training a model, you're looking, you're monitoring the progress and the performance metrics that you're looking at. So that could be accuracy, precision, recall, and the losses. You want your losses to go down for every single epoch that you're training the model for. And an epoch is essentially just an iteration. So when we train our model, we take our data, we pass that data through our model one time, we calculate the loss, then we optimize our whole model back, and that's a single iteration. Then we can just do that over and over and over again. And at the end, the model should actually like learn to predict our data and then the loss will become smaller and smaller. So that's why we want to see our loss graph go down. This is essentially how the models are act like being trained. And then we just monitor the metrics to see if the model is act like improving, if it's converging at a local minimum or a local maximum in the different metrics. And then we can fine tune our hyper parameters and do multiple training runs. So once a model is done, training, we need to validate it and test the AI model. One of the hardest problems when we're talking about machine learning models is actually like getting it out from a training environment into a production ready environment and the model actually generalizes on the data because we don't want to overfit on the training data. Let's say that we want to make predictions of a specific car. We're just training on the model. We're training a model to predict, predict cars, but we're only training on one specific version of a car or a specific brand and then we put it out there in the real world and it's just missing all other brands and all other cars driving around out there because it doesn't generalize it's not pretty much just not enough variation in our data set we don't have enough data in our training set for a model to learn to generalize to new use cases that it hasn't seen before so this is a very very important step in the training pretty much just the full end-to-end -end training pipeline of a machine learning model. So you can do splits, so you do a training split, validation split, and a test split, and the test split, the model never sees that. Validation split, you can use that to do some validation, do multiple iterations with the high parameters, but the test set, we want to use that for testing how well will our model actually do once we put it out there in the real world. So if we get a high accuracy and very low loss on a training set, but we have very bad performance on our test set, we're overfitting to our training data. We don't want to underfit. We don't want to overfit. We want our training data and our test data to be roughly the same accuracies and losses. That's very, very important. And you can do tons of different things, tons of different algorithms and approaches. Could also be K-fold cross-validation. So you basically just take 20% of your, of, your, of your data as test set and training set, and then you pretty much just shuffle it for each 
training run, that means you pretty much just use your full data set as a test split and a training split, and then you just go in a circle, iterate everything through. So once you have done all of that, there's so much more to do for the validation and the training of the AI models. We have everything covered on the channel here. So make sure to check that out if you want more details, but this is essentially the most important things in these two steps. So once we have a model that we are satisfied with, we need to deploy the model and also maintain it because the data, it could drift over time. We need to monitor how is the model performing, but also just how do we deploy it? It could be a model that we deploy on an edge device. It could be in the cloud where we have an API. We send our image to the API. We get our response back with our results. So we really need to determine what is the best solution for our use case and deploy it. An optimization framework when we're deploying a model is very, very important, not only for computer vision, but any machine learning model out there, it can most likely be optimized to run on specific hardware. With Autolytics, we have the export function it's one line of code and you can export it based on the hardware. If you want to run on Nvidia hardware, Intel hardware, Apple hardware, all these different things, they can optimize it and the model can act like run two, three, up to five times, if not even more faster compared to if you're just using the model directly out of the box as you trained it without any optimizations at all and you won't really lose any accuracy either. So this is a no-brainer once you want to deploy the model, monitor it, make sure that you're actually just monitor it, see if the model is performing as your test that you did. So this is very important. These are pretty much just the best practices, how the whole machine learning AI model training pipeline works. And you can read more about the best practices here and also training AI models across different fields with both computer vision, speech and audio processing, natural language processing, we have forecasting and predictive anal analytics with time series data. That could be sales data, that could be a sense of data and so on. And here you can see the full project workflow in a diagram. So this is a pretty good overview to end it off with here. Make sure to go through it. This is just a quick overview. There's so much more into it. If you really dive into all the details, everything is covered on the channel. With the Autolytics training framework, it's just a few lines of code. So you should definitely go in and check it out. Hope you guys learned a ton in this video here. Hope to see you in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.